Welcome everybody to the October 19th meeting of the Housing and Economic Development Committee. So we've got some good stuff on tonight's agenda. Um, first item on the agenda, uh, just from an administrative standpoint, I think I've got two handbook sign-offs right now. So for the two of you who did that, um, thank you. So just a reminder that there's a signature page in the boards and committees handbook. And um, as chair, I'm responsible for collecting those and making sure that I have that on file so that everybody's acknowledging that they're familiar with um, kind of code of conduct and, and open meeting law rules and all of that stuff. So again, I know it's not light reading, but at your earliest convenience, if, if you could take a cruise through that and then just get me the signature page, that would be great. <clears throat> um, and then the other thing that came up, I had mentioned this um, at the last meeting, um, but that there's been another change. So uh, Crystal, who's on our committee, I believe has also joined the DEI committee um, and they they meet on Thursdays as well. Um, but I, you know, I explained to her it was going to be difficult for us to switch nights. So she's actually wondering if we might be able to go back to meeting at six o'clock um, because that would allow her to um, likely attend both meetings either in whole or part. So I just wanted to check: is everybody still, you know, has anything changed, or are people able to meet at six o'clock instead of six thirty? I I know I I don't have an opposition to that. That would be amendable. Uh, okay. My recollection is that we moved it to 6.30 to accommodate Crystal's work schedule. Right. So I, I think that um, I think things may have shifted back again. So so this was at her request. OK. OK. I mean, I'm always a fan of getting these things over and <laughs> I'm done with earlier. So. Um, so I guess, Bill, if if that's OK, then starting with our November meeting, could you just change the Zoom time on that to? Yes. Six. Okay. I had posted, uh, by the way, a um, I posted this as a, as a recurring meeting. So, uh, any agenda that you grab from now on will have the same link, so you can um, borrow from an old agenda. But I will I will make that change to six o'clock. Okay. Thank you. And have we got um, a date on that November meeting? Sorry, Mark. The 16th. I was just looking for a date. The 16th. Great. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. We just started. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, Tony Marillis just texted. He's having trouble getting in, but he said it has to do with his Zoom is being updated. So he may be popping in shortly. Um, okay, so if nothing else on the administrative side, uh, Lynn Gray did reach out today. Apparently in Holyoke, they're having some big uh, debate that has to do with their elections down there. And given the fact that she's the general manager for the Holyoke Mall as well, um, she apologized, but felt that she needed to be there, but she still would like to come to a meeting. So I'll send her the date for the next one and see if um, she can join us then. While we're on that topic uh, of mall conversions, I did send you, Molly, a link to a Globe article that was unfortunately behind the paywall. So I did not get a chance to read it. I don't know if you were able to extract it from behind the paywall. Uh, I I have a Globe subscription, so I was able to read it. Um, isn't that, I thought I'd sent that around to everybody, you know? I don't. Or was that a different one? I didn't didn't recall that one. The, okay. Essentially, the, what we had, we had had a brief discussion about um, one of the other pyramid properties uh, <clears throat> converting a closed retail space to a large scale housing. And apparently that eventually went down in flames. Uh, I'm not sure if this was the only project of that type, 
but mm -hmm. uh, definitely it was a big one in the, the Eastern Mass area. I want to say Woburn, but I might be wrong on that. No, see, I yeah. thought it was brain tree. <laughs> right, well. the, the only article I remember being sent around was that Business West one after the the great outline um, that was done. Um, but I'd love to read the Boston Globe one if we're able to share that. Yeah. Thanks, Emma. You're right. I knew I said something. <laughs> All right. And so to Bill's point, uh, let me see if I can um, get it out from behind the paywall and send that article around. OK, I will do that. OK, so the third agenda item, um, potential development projects, 40 R zoning discussion. So Mr. Dwyer, would you like to update us on uh, what's been uh, happening at your planning board meetings on these topics? We have had a long discussion with Ken Comia, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, at a uh, at our first Tuesday of October, um, following up on one from the prior first Tuesday of September. Um, the original plan that he had uh, worked out with the powers that be in Boston was a 40-yard uh, district that basically encompassed both sides of Route 9 um, from, uh, call it from Chinese immersion to uh, Howard Johnson's on the south and from uh, Lowe's to Home Depot on the north. Um, we thought that was a little excessive as a starting point um but we haven't really gotten too much further in defining anything um what we are going to do is uh, look for grant funding to hire pioneer valley planning commission as a 40r consultant to work more closely with us and with um boston on purely 40R issues and not the global zoning issues that we currently contract with PVPC for. So it's not a, uh, that's not going to be a, uh, a uh, quick fix. Um, in fact, at this point, seeing something for Springtown meeting doesn't look all that uh, certain. So uh, we're going to keep working on it, but uh, it's it moves slowly. And Bill, I'm just curious. I saw parts of that meeting. I don't, I'm not sure if I saw the whole one, but um, I definitely saw the part where there was concern on part of the planning board. You know that the the footprint that was, um, you know, just kind of thrown out there as an initial thought was definitely too too large, but in terms of, do you have any sense where your board stands relative to just the concept of 40R and Hadley at all, or? Well, we're definitely going to keep exploring it. Mm -hmm. um, at, at this point, I feel that we know more about it than maybe a handful of other people in the community, uh, but we don't realize we don't know a lot about it. And, um, there are a lot of details that would need to be worked out in how you create a formula for what you get. Um, we haven't even started on that. So I think that, uh, uh, I think we wanna keep working on it. Uh, we'll take it, we'll continue moving it forward. And I think the, everyone's agreed that we'd like to take it to, take something to town meeting, put something together that's strong enough or that's comprehensive enough to warrant bringing it to town meeting, not just a gesture, but a real, let's put it together, see what it works, see what it looks like and see if town meeting will buy it. So um, it, it'll move forward, whether it will be successful or not remains to be seen. Are there any other um, zoning types of issues that you're working on right now or? Uh, we have two very minor technical zoning amendments for uh, fall town meeting, special town meeting next week. Um, I won't 
even bore you with them unless you really want to, unless you're dying to hear about them. But uh, they are, uh, they're hyper-technical. Uh, we're changing the size of signs in the residential and agricultural residential district for home occupations from two square feet to four square feet. This is the kind of big thinking we, uh, big, <laughs> big ticket issues we work on. But it turns out that the standard political sign that you would get at, or the st standard temporary sign you would get at Staples or where have you, is all is already closer to three square feet than two square feet. So uh, we just thought we'd try to work with what what's commercially available out there for people who want to uh, put up a sign, bearing in mind that home occupations only get to put up a sign after they've been granted a special permit through our uh, process. So it's not like they're going to be popping up everywhere. Uh, we don't really have anything on the books yet for um, for spring. 40R would would probably be the big the big thing. But then we also find issues that pop up over the uh, course of the year, uh, like food trucks, which went from zero to sixty um, last year, uh, last spring. So. Um, We'll uh, we'll see what we've got in the hopper, but nothing nothing particular at the moment. Okay. Anybody have any uh, questions for Bill about planning? Uh, speaking of the food truck thing, is that all settled now, or are you still working on the bylaws? We've approved the existence of food trucks in all districts except the residential district. Um, and even there, if you lived in a residential district, you live in a agricultural residential. So uh, the residentials are off Rocky Hill, uh, off Mount Warner Road, uh, between Mount Warner and Huntington. Okay. If you wanted to um, hire a food truck for a private party, you could do it anywhere. Um, what we have not gotten closure on on food trucks is whether they will will be how much regulation we can apply so that they don't just pop up anywhere. Um, for example, there was an inquiry from someone who wanted to uh, put a food truck at the uh the closed gas station at the at the bridge then that little triangle parcel which we mm -hmm. had approved as a coffee shop after quite a bit of deliberation and frankly it'd be a terrible spot for a food truck mm -hmm. turns out that the uh gentleman in, had had not bothered to consult with the property owners before he <laughs> decided he wanted to put it there so uh that didn't go anywhere all right um, but uh, we're keeping an eye on that. Um, and we'll see how it uh, how demand develops. Right. Thanks, Bill. Now you can, you, for instance, probably couldn't put one in your parking lot because you don't you hardly have enough room for the cars right. you have there anyway. Uh, right. Uh, at one point, uh, Home Depot wanted to have uh, a hot dog cart in the front front of every store, um, right? But they ran into trouble with the uh, Board of Health over that. So, what we allow for zoning purposes may not work everywhere for Board of Health purposes. So it's a uh, it's not a one stop shop for getting permits. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, right, um, next on the agenda, we have UMass Project Assistance Update, and Tony's with us now. Um, Tony, you want to let us all know if uh, what, if anything, has transpired since our last conversations? Well, I finally got on Zoom, so I can tell you that. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Um, updates are not always uh, friendly to this computer, it seems. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, there has been uh, outreach by both Bill and Molly, as you know, to um, to Henry Rensky and Steve uh, Schreiber about potential project uh, sites that can be explored. Uh, our next step, uh, and, and this has just happened just recently, is to reach out to Henry and Steve to, and Molly and, and Bill to at least have a meeting to go over what the scope of any project would be. Um, and, and get a little bit more uh, detailed rather than um, just the, the space, you know, what exactly are we looking for in these projects? And so uh, we hope to set that meeting up in the next couple of days. Um, I know Henry's, Henry's busy this week, but it looks like next week might be, there, there might be some openings. So um, hopefully we get that done and have some more to report in the next meeting. Um, I think going back, um, I haven't been able to make the last couple of meetings, but I, I believe Molly you probably have talked about um, some conversations with uh, Chancellor Reyes. Um, and, and, you know, I think that there is um, some enthusiasm around the idea of, a, pro of a, uh, a student project or an academic project um, that would be, um, you know, looking at uh, some of the needs for H Hadley around housing and economic development. So that's really the update for now. Okay, thanks. So yeah, hopefully we can um, find time to meet on that soon and, and keep things moving forward there. Uh, okay, so any questions for Tony? No? Okay. Um, so the next item on the agenda is uh, the information session that we've been discussing on housing and zoning. Um, so after the last meeting, uh, Justin and Mark um, agreed to get together and uh, the three of us would work on an outline. So I'm happy to report that Mark and Molly, I think were a very good sounding board and Justin did all of the work. <laughs> so uh, if it's okay, I'm gonna turn it on over to Justin. So this is something I, I did send along um, or Justin did to make sure that everybody had it in advance of the meeting. And I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at it, but. Yeah, uh, I just wanna say it, it. it's so detailed, but not like overdone, but really, well outlined and I think it'll have a really nice flow and just appreciate the work that the three of you, especially Larry, were able to put together for it. Thanks. Um, so Justin, do you wanna do you wanna hit the highlights or do you want me to do a screen share and you can pull it up or what what's everybody's pleasure? Um, actually, Molly, if you don't mind sharing it, that'd be great because I, I have the Word doc open and I can take some notes in there as we talk. Um, but I'll give kind of the broad brush. It hopefully was obvious reading the text what the goal is. But ultimately, what we're hoping to do is, you know, emphasize that this is education, not debate. You know, we're trying to provide a series of points of information that seem to come up frequently in either resident concerns or maybe confusion about how certain processes work. Um, so the the abstract is really intending to show that, you know, first and foremost, we're not, this isn't a personal agenda. We're reacting explicitly to the findings of the housing production plan survey um, of which there was a pretty poignant question uh, that asked people to identify the top priorities that the town should focus on with regards to housing. And so from those priorities, it was pretty clear that everything we've been discussing for several months now uh, is also likely at the top of most of our residents' minds. Um, the only priority from the top of that list that we can really address as a committee is the education piece, but that hopefully will support uh, priorities one and two, which were related to zoning bylaws and um, providing housing for, for multiple socioeconomic levels. So the, the high, sort of the high level goal of this is really to inform residents so that if and when something does come to town meeting, uh, they have the information that they need to make an informed decision. And we don't know what the decision is or what the action or conclusion needs to be. Uh, but the idea is that they'll have enough information so that they're not reacting to something for the first time as it's being put up for vote. Uh, on the outline, which is I think where we probably want to talk the most about the content, um, what we tried to do is we're, we're thinking of this as sort of a panel style. So you know, we may put a series of people you know, up on a table in front of the 
the audience and um, give kind of each person a subject. And the, the idea is that the person will go through, you know, but this outline is really just a recommendation for the content that they could cover, but they'll go through their subject matter, um, you know, present that information. And then uh, at the end, I'd love to get some thoughts on this, but the, the idea would be that we would have some sort of a question and answer session, ideally moderated so that it's not just open public comment because those can tend to go kind of in any which way. Uh, but the, the hope is that through that process, we might be able to hear some of the concerns, questions, or maybe points of confusion from residents directly after they've had a chance to actually receive all this information. So it's, it's a lot, but um, you know, the hope is that it's digestible enough and uh, you know, relatable enough to the majority of people that it, it won't be you know, too much of a, a hurdle for them to process. So uh, I don't know, Molly, if we want to just scroll down, we can talk about the agenda. And uh, I think the people that we put in here, you know, we just basically plugged in people we thought would be appropriate, open to recommendations if there are other people who could maybe pair with some of these folks or, or other people who are more qualified. Um, but we thought it probably made sense for Ken uh, with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to do the introduction because they've done so much research in Hadley already. They have a ton of this data and he's probably the best person to present it succinctly and in an unbiased fashion. Um, and from there, uh, we thought we'd go into sort of an, a recap of what was a previous forum on uh, the overview of, of the sort of town government process in Hadley, you know, how things get done effectively. Um, Molly, I slotted you in there just because of your position on the select board, but also open to other people taking that on if you think there's a better candidate. Um, and then we thought it would be a, a great segue to move into zoning and zoning bylaws and the process of zoning, especially with two zoning amendments on the um, the warrant for a town meeting, you know, this is going to be something that I think is pretty relevant. So, um, Bill, we put you on there because you seem to be the the expert on that in this committee, but again, also open to other people if you'd rather not, or if there's somebody who'd be better suited. Uh, and then lastly, this is where kind of the meat of it is and where it really becomes more of like a panel discussion. Um, we tried to identify the key areas where either, you know, information probably deserved to be demystified or where there seemed to be maybe some misconceptions, uh, particularly around school system enrollment, which we all heard from um, Annie, at, I think it was the last meeting or the one before, uh, that some of those numbers are actually, you know, they actually get better with more residents and more children. So there's, you know, there's some things like that, which maybe our residents don't know intuitively uh, and this is the section where we hope to sort of present all that information in a factual and unbiased way. Uh, and then the conclusion would be the sort of question and answer session. Um, so with that, I mean, we can go through the specific text if there are recommended edits, but um, I'd love on the highlighted pieces, I'd love to hear thoughts on maybe who we could put in each of these categories and uh, recommendations for how we might handle a moderated question and answer discussion at the end. Kind of a timeline. Uh, what kind of a time frame are you envisioning for this? One hour, two hours? Yeah, I think ideally, I mean, this is just my experience with public meetings as an architect, ideally an hour maximum for the presentation of information. Um, and then I would, I would hazard a guess that the question and answer session would likely extend another hour, uh, maybe longer. Uh, that's part of the reason why moderating it would be helpful so that we don't go too far off topic and spend three hours um, getting to everybody's comments. Yeah, I think anything longer than two hours is not gonna work for a lot of people. Um, I think a lot of the presentations that I've been to in town, they've been scheduled for like an hour and a, and a half, but oftentimes to your point, they've been, they've run over because of the questions, mm -hmm. so. So Justin, may I ask, is this, are you envisioning a presentation by all of these folks to fit into an hour or, you know, starting with Ken, or is this something that you're looking at? Ken has an hour presentation and then there are breakouts because this is quite detailed and there's a lot here. Yeah. I was thinking that the, the presentation part would be one hour for, for the whole items one through four. Um, hmm. So the idea that, you know, the introduction by Ken, maybe that's five to 10 minutes and picks up the okay. key data points that we found from the master plan survey, the housing production plan survey, 
um, some of the trends in town from maybe a demographic perspective. Uh, but five to 10 minutes is probably enough there. And then I think sections two and three, you know, could could probably be two hours each in and of themselves, but um, <laughs> probably better suited to limit to maybe like 10 or 15 minutes with four mm -hmm. kind of being where we would spend the bulk, maybe, you know, 30 to 45 minutes of the presentation. So the only thing that I, I guess I would suggest, because this is really, there's a lot here. I mean, even just in the outline, but um, because there's so much being covered, just, you know, really emphasizing with people that this is a, a total survey, this, you know, that this discussion, it, it, you know, and um, because, you know, it, each one of these things can, just like you said, could be an hour or longer. Right. Yeah, that's the, the point of the, the content under each bullet is hoping yeah. to help, you know, sort of put the guardrails up for some of these discussions so that we can focus on the pieces that matter and not not spend too much time digging into, you know, the nitty gritty because we'll lose attention the minute someone starts to ramble too far. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, I think it, it's almost a syllabus for a semester course or at least a, a <laughs> seminar. Um, which leads me to think that uh, a few years ago, Molly pulled together a, I, I forget exactly what you called it. Government 101. Okay. Yeah. Um, which was spread over, it was about an hour a week, or was it even as that often? Yeah, I think it was, um, I think we did it in just two sessions. I think we just had a part one and part two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, Bill, item two on this would be kind of a recap of that content. So not intending to dive deep. Um, I think high level, when I'm, what my brain was thinking when I typed this was item one is why are we here? Item two is how does this work? Item three is this you know, more specifics about what we're here to talk about in early zoning. Um, and then item four is the litany of information that we want to toss out there to help inform the public. For people who are feeling that that may be too weighty to fit into a two hour um, two hour session, are there things in here that you think might be more extraneous than others that we could peel back? I can, I, I can see doing it a couple of ways. And one is maybe taking items one through three up separately. Uh, we can make a a night of it without getting necessarily too deep into anything, but uh, just lay the foundation, let that settle for a while, and then do item uh, four and five as part two on a separate uh, separate night. Um. And Bill, are you thinking that the zoning, zoning bylaws and the rezoning process, are you thinking, because the, the town government part of it, I honestly am thinking like literally three minutes, um, just explaining to people that, you know, again, not everybody participates in, in town government in, a, in any sort of way. Again, we only have a couple of hundred people typically coming to town meeting. So the vast majority of the voters don't even understand that that town meeting actually has the power, right? Um, so my thought was really just to kind of explain to people, you know, we, we don't have a full-time planner. We have a planning board. Um, planning board makes the recommendations relative to zoning, but it has to get through town meeting. That's why, you know, it's so important um, to go to town meeting, but I'm not, not anything too much more weighty than that for this purpose.
Yeah, I, th- I think it's hard because we want people to be informed, but I just don't want to lose people right. in the middle or have someone go to the first session and not the second session and then not have the global information about what's being presented. Um, I don't know, just I, my two cents, you know. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I can think of is maybe we do one through four in one session and then a second session for the question and answer piece so people have time to digest and maybe even watch it uh, digitally if they couldn't make it in person. Mm-hmm. So if I, yeah, could, if I could add, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Molly. No, I, just, I, I, I think I like, I like that idea better because you're right, there are going to be people who will be watching it after the fact. And then people could submit questions and it could be really more structurally moderated. Um, Cause I, I just know a, a forum that I had an experience on several months ago um, had opportunities to be executed differently. So I, it would be nice to see this be clean and organized and well presented. Yeah, I, think I like that idea of leaving uh, the questions to be like a second part, like a follow-up. This could easily run into two hours uh, on its own, and then we don't have any time for questions. So I think we already have something planned to uh, accept questions, have questions be submitted, and then answered in, a, in another form would be a good way to go. Yeah, I think I think that probably makes the most sense. Um, I think splitting up the content, uh, I forget who said it earlier, is probably risky because you might get somebody at the first one and not the second or at the second and not the first and having partial information doesn't help. Um, so I do think one through four should probably stay together. But the question and answer piece is the one that gives me heartburn because that could be 10 hours. And if you don't stop the meeting until there's no more questions, you know, you're stuck. That is a great point. Uh, one, one thing that I, I would just say, it, you know, and, and maybe I'm just being a little bit too picky or nerdy about this, but, um, you know, impact of housing and new developments in Hadley, I, 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 I think we need to phrase this, you know, where impact and opportunity. I mean, I, I know that there could be a positive impact with economic development and additional housing, but I think impact winds up, you know, hitting me in a way that I think it hits a lot of people where, you know, thinking about it being negative. And we really only have, I think, among these points, you know, just the um, uh, potential for business development and, um, you know, some other things that kind of like a little bit in the business and economic considerations that that hint at positive outcomes. Um, you know, everything else here seems to me to be like, you know, really kind of like heavily kind of weighted towards resource use or resource needs that, that you know, kind of imply, again, um, a, a negative draw on um, on the town rather than, than, you know, what potentially could be a positive windfall as well. So I would just urge, you know, you all to think about that. You're very astute, Tony, because I actually had the word impact on all of the subsections under four and took it out for that reason. And then I must have just not realized it was also the title. Uh, but I like the word opportunities. So impacts and opportunities. I think we need to be honest, you know, that there, there are pros and cons. And I think we're going to be talking about both. Any thoughts about um, who best to address some of these sections? Again, as Justin said, we were kind of brainstorming the three of us, but um, you know, Bill, what do you think about Ken Comia? You, we were making a mental leap that he would like to participate. <laughs> um, I'm sure he <clears throat> he'd be interested in it, but. Uh... Bear in mind that he he, he he's on contract, so right. uh, um, you know there'd be an impact on the planning board budget 
for the amount of time he was committed to this. Um, I think he would have a contribution to make, but at the same time, I think people might be more interested in hearing from people in town. By the way, talk, talking about nerdiness, uh, 4B, uh, superintendent of schools, has two O's. Yeah, I actually already caught that, but I was hoping nobody mm -hmm. else would see it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I proofread for my job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think part of um, part of the thought is that you know I, hearing from people in town can cut in both directions, right? Because some people are more in, more interested and inclined and and believe that there's more. Um, you know, the, somebody who's not in town is going to bring a little bit more objectivity. Um, perhaps they're not um, putting a spin, a particular spin that might support, you know, their own uh, thoughts on this particular topic. So I think that's why we were we were trying to figure out if we could integrate, you know, have, have it be a mix of uh, people from town and um, as well as third parties. And, and I'm just wondering, I guess this is a question for Bill, um, the affordable housing trust fund. I mean, I, I can't imagine if we wanted to bring somebody in for one, I, I don't know how much money we'd be talking, um, but if it's a relatively nominal amount rather than the planning board budget, do you think that, I mean, this this is supporting um, efforts in that regard. Do you think maybe there, that might be a way that we could fund something if we did want to bring people in? I'm, I'm just worried about getting too far into the weeds when we don't have a, a project in front of us. Mm -hmm. I, I guess for for me as a resident, like thinking about if if I wasn't on this committee, um, what what I would want to hear, like hearing from the planning from planning board members in town wouldn't feel very biased to me, but certainly hearing from the hired leaders of school, fire, and the police department that it people instantly kind of think of it impacting very a lot, I think is it would be more important in terms of like the players rather than representatives um, or delegates from their departments. Um, I don't know, I just wonder what other people's thoughts are too. I think Molly, you, you are the one who had suggested the police chief, fire chief, potentially presenting on uh, infrastructure and services. Um, I'm not very familiar with either of them, but uh, I think you had suggested that, you know, one of, at least one of them has a wealth of knowledge and, you know, would be able to really speak to that issue, uh, you know, very well and clearly and articulately. Uh, I'm not sure, I know Annie presented to us and I'm not sure if anybody's talked to her to see if she's willing, uh, but I think that would probably be an important step is to make sure these, these folks actually are interested in participating uh, and that we're not volunteering them blindly. Yeah, I think I think Annie um, would likely be willing, um, you know, if we gave her a heads up. And then, you know, the other question too is, um, you know, whether the, the town administrator might be more appropriate to, to talk about some of these things with, and then have the DPW director, police chief, fire chief, hopefully in the room, you know, again, if they're willing to participate. So there's a backstop there, if there are any kind of clarification needed or detailed questions.
So where do you, where, um, what do we think the next step is then? I mean, if, does this outline from a topic standpoint generally work for people? Oh yeah, I, I think it. Yes. They're, they're all helpful points, um, and they're all areas that are perhaps not fully understood by many people in town. So I think it's good to get them out there. Um, my thought is that. Um, if this is something we do in, in the abstract, you know, let's let's plan on doing this in December, and we don't have any concept of uh, a zoning solution developed. Um, I guess it's probably worth doing just to be informative. And I think that's really the goal that we talked about. Um, the housing, well, as as um, Justin put it in his abstract up front, we're trying to check the box about education um, uh, around housing. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm always a big fan of letting people know you know, what, what's the starting point? Where, where are we at right now? Um, as a foundation for the conversation that hopefully will soon follow about where do we, where do we need and want to be? So I'm, I'm looking at this as like an initial educational step with hopefully more to come to your point, Bill, that let's say the planning board, um, does decide to put forward a 4DR, then people who, who had this foundation, then maybe we're scheduling another informational session and not just, you know, town meeting forum run through the article quickly, but an actual educational session about what this means before they get to town meeting and, and are asked to vote on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could actually see reusing it, mm -hmm. doing a... Uh, hmm. A, uh, a test run when there's nothing pending and then reusing the outline in support of a particular project or particular proposal. I did just want to uh, make sure everybody saw the uh, news yesterday on um, at the state house that the $4 billion Right, that uh, they they did announce that they were spending four billion on affordable housing. Yeah, I was going to mention that under the uh, items not anticipated forty eight <laughs> hours in advance. <laughs> when we get to that, yeah, yeah. The governor actually was out here last yesterday, um, touting that uh, at the uh, Western uh, uh, Western Mass Developers Conference. So. There's a lot in that bill to, to, you know, certainly consider. One thing that I, I would just note, um, and, and I probably should be quiet as the non, um, the non-resident here, um, you know, from my perch and Pelham. But the, uh, the, the one thing that that did come up, I think, and and just looking again at the business and economic considerations, you know, it's almost like business and economic competitiveness. You know, it, it would almost be the thing that you might want to label that at because. And one of the things that, that had been talked about over and over and over, particularly from new start uh, startup businesses that were in early stage funding, you know, as they as they try to move on, you know, housing is the big issue and, and housing is the big issue throughout the region right now. And so, you know, Hadley has been so competitive um, and so economically vital um, over the last many years um, that, you know, just I think to build to your point about what the outcomes are, just like the, the education and, and the starting point of a discussion, I think at least has to be considered by by your residents. So I, I will now stop talking. <laughs> uh, that's a great point, though, Tony. And I think um, Mark's article that he had circulated basically got to that point, too, which is, you know, that communities that don't invest in housing become inherently unsustainable for businesses who can't attract talent who can afford to live there. Um, and while, you know, I know that there's a lot of opposition to housing in Hadley 
from what I've heard, uh, you know, there's a tremendous support for business in Hadley, but that business might potentially be at a disadvantage because of the housing inventory shortfall. Yeah, and we've definitely heard that from some of our, our business owners. There's no question. I can concur with that too. Yeah, right. Okay, I've added under item 4D, I've added one to address that. Okay. Okay, so I guess then for just taking notes here too, to make sure I've got it right. So I think what we've generally agreed on is that we want to move forward with this. Um, I think the time frame we had talked about was um, after the holidays, maybe January ish. Um, that it would um, be a two session, so one night for presentation, a gap, of, a short gap of time for people to digest and, and tune in who weren't able to to go to the presentation, so they can see it in their own time frame, um, and then. Um, come back with a Q&A and we can figure out a way for people to um, submit questions in advance, ask for clarification, ask for additional information, whatever, um, and bring people back together um, for that. And same thing in a hybrid format to try to encourage as much participation as possible. Um, Justin's made some of the edits, as he said along the way about <clears throat> tweaking the the uh, outline content here. And then I guess in terms of next steps, we want to kind of key in on um, the speakers. I mean, Bill, I guess the big question would be the, the Pioneer Valley Estate Planning Council. Um, you know. Pioneer whether... Valley Planning Commission. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got too many committees in my life, right? So, <laughs> thank you. Yes, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, so, I mean, do you think that that's a showstopper in terms of I, I, I don't him? necessarily think it is. Um, um, you know, this time around, uh, uh, Jim Maximoski was the chair of the Housing Development Committee, or um, Housing Production Plan production Committee. Plan. Yep. So uh, you know he's certainly aware of what was involved in that, um, and um, likewise the Planning Board as a whole took over the master plan this time. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have a separate subcommittee for the update, so uh, there may be some some tweaks or some uh, bring some of it in-house, uh, more in-house, or we can see Ken might be very happy to participate as long as it was, uh, you know, as, as long as he was assured it was just going to be a concise five minutes here and 10 minutes there. Mm -hmm. now, okay. now, are we sure about those, those funds? I mean, under the, um, under the Affordable Housing Trust Fund guidelines here, it says um, the purpose is to support creation or preservation of housing. I mean, uh, you have to have the the info session. That's part of the creation of the uh, the public support for it. I, maybe we could go to the state and um, or we could contact someone just to check and see if we couldn't use those funds or um, to recoup uh, Ken on that. I'm not, I'm not saying we can't use the planning board. Uh, I just don't, it, it's going to depend on um, how, uh, so it, it, it's going to entirely depend on, on how much we're asking from him time-wise. We usually are able to turn a little money back at the end of each year anyway. So uh, I just want to be mindful that it, it he doesn't come for free. Um, and, uh, I don't know if I want to, ex I don't know 
how much the affordable housing trust fund trustees want to spend figuring out something like this. Um, I, I think we could probably find sources, but I think um, especially if we end up um, if we end up contracting with PVPC to be our 40R consultant, then we may be able to slip this under that umbrella. So can we leave that with you as homework? Then use the <laughs> trust fund money for that. Well, the trust fund, yeah, the trust fund money is there. Um, uh, at, at the moment, the uh, Molly and the five members of the planning board are the trustees of the trust fund because we've at the time it was first established we were the only ones who really knew what what it was um at some point we're definitely i'm supportive of opening it up to a broader base but um uh, at the moment that's that's what we got um certainly we can explore it but um I, maybe if we can get fund Ken through another route and he is willing to participate, that would probably be cleaner. Okay. I think we can probably also, when we're planning this, we can probably talk to Ken and try to define his scope a little bit more clearly. So if it's, you know, mm -hmm. prepare two slides and, you know, talk for 15 minutes and then be available for questions, it seems like a pretty minimal lift for him. Um, I don't think we're ha having him design and, and lead the session. He's really just a resource. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, so Molly, for in terms of next steps, I can make these these edits. I think it needs to go in front of the select board, right? Um, for approval and then would be put to the planning board for support or recommendation or something to that effect. Yeah, at last night's um, select board meeting, when we got to the um, part for um, items for future agendas, I did mention that our committee wanted to come in front of the select board and the planning board, um, give a quick update on where we're at. So make sure everybody's comfortable with the work that we have underway. Um, and the next, uh, so the select board meeting is the I, I said the first one in November. And it turns out our first meeting in November is November 1st, which means that the planning board actually wouldn't be meeting then until the Tuesday following. Um, so we would just obviously we'll want to make it clear to the select board that this is still, you know, we, we want to get um, a reaction and feedback from the planning board and that, you know, Anything they say yay or nay to is still subject to um, the planning board uh, being able to vet this as well. So would would that work, Bill? Do you think? Uh, I think so. It we have a potentially acrimonious public hearing scheduled, but we also have Ken scheduled for uh, the seven. So that would be. Uh, We'll just have to see how how things play out. Okay. Okay. So Molly, should I circulate the edits to this group, um, and then you'll coordinate to get in front of the select board? Yep. Yep. I would do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'll actually have until the the Thursday, the second depending on what reaction we get from the select board, I don't have to post my agenda for planning until the next day. Okay, all right, that will work out then. Um, and ideally, I mean, as many people from our committee, um, if you're able to attend one or both of those would be really great. Uh, I'll see if um, the chair will put it on as a, an appointment time um, for select board and see if we can do that. So that everybody knows it'll be you know at six fifteen or whatever. And what what are those dates? One's the first, 
select board meets the first and third uh, Wednesdays of every month. So uh, this November will be, they'll be meeting on the the 1st and the 15th, I guess. Planning right. board meets the 1st and 3rd Tuesdays of every month. So it's November 7th, Mark, will be the planning board meeting. 1st and 7th are the two meetings. Mm -hmm. Every so often we get these five Tuesday months that throw us out of sync. <laughs> no. All right. Anything on this for the time being? I mean, and this I'm sure this will be our primary topic of discussion. Um, you know, for the next couple of meetings. So. Yep. Okay. Um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if you were going to move on to the uh, not anticipated, uh, I don't know anything more about the governor's proposal that I read in the Gazette this morning, uh, but I did see there were some zoning proposals in there too, such as making uh, accessory apartments allowed, allowable by right, uh, both attached and detached. And we presently mm -hmm. allow attached accessory apartments by special permit. And we do not allow detached accessory apartments. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, I, I, zo I focused in, zoomed in on the zoning aspects of it and not so much on the finance end of it. Um, so uh, I will look forward to more detail on some of those. Yeah, a couple of points. Um, one point I read <clears throat> said that there was definitely an emphasis on Western Massachusetts. Um, they pointed to the fact that we have that rural rural affairs director, I think her title is, um, who's great. But, you know, so so there was that. And then another point that was made, I, I read <clears throat> the accessory apartment issue bill um, and made note of the fact that already the, I think it's the, MMA, Mass Municipal Association, I believe has come out fairly strongly against that. They're concerned about local local rights. Is that, yeah, okay. You guys read the same thing, okay. It yeah, is so online on MassGov, they have a, uh, they have a release and it says the um, allow accessory dwelling units less than 900 feet as a right with the ability for communities to set some reasonable restrictions. Um, the other thing I, I, I didn't know anything about, they said it would uh, be available to communities, um, a new policy to include the option of adopting a real estate transaction fee of mm -hmm. a half a percent to 2% on a portion of a property sale over a million or the county medium home sale price. We have another. actually been talking about that as uh, a fairer way to fund uh, affordable housing than trying to extract a payment or an affordable unit from a developer. Since we generally have small scale development here, uh, we're not we're not seeing subdivisions with 40, 50, or 60 lots in them. We're seeing subdivisions with uh, 10 to 20. <clears throat> um, and then when we're asking the developer to contribute an affordable unit or make a payment in lieu of providing an affordable unit, um, in some ways it's counterproductive because we're asking for money for the affordable housing trust fund. The developer in turn is going to, not going to eat that loss. The developer is going to spread the loss on lot one across <laughs> lots two through eight, and they'll be more expensive. Um, there's also the dynamic that I've, discussed with some developers that uh, the uh, the trend for a for a commercial developer the trend is build big once you've bought the lot 
making the house more elaborate is um, not that much more costly. And once you bought the lot, putting a, um, a three bedroom ranch on it doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, so it, that's why you get the McMansions because that's where the money is for the developer. Right. Uh, as those prices climb, uh, yeah, it does become attractive to say that uh, the excise tax uh, at the moment, which was increased a few years ago to um, help fund the uh, Community Preservation Act, is $4.48 per thousand. Um, and uh, I won't try to do the math in a hurry, but, uh, you know, it, Usually, for most properties, if three hundred, four hundred thousand, you're looking at two thousand dollars in excise tax, and it's a tax on the seller. Um, and you get up to a million. Uh, you get a developer selling a house for a million. Maybe that's the place to take uh, to to um, look for some funds to support affordable housing. Is yes, the developer is making money off of it, presumably. Um, I know that definitely, if you're talking the Boston area, the million dollar price point is uh, probably not far from the medium these days. Um, we don't see a lot of million dollar sales around here, uh, at least non-commercial million dollar sales. Well, you might want to look at the real estate listings right now. It's getting <laughs> bad. Yeah, there are there are some out there. Uh, yeah. The there are a lot of 1.1s that I see. Um, but um, whether whether the list price converts to a sale price at that, we'll see. Right. But definitely there is activity there. And by contrast, when uh, Governor Baker rolled out his plan uh, affecting the MBTA communities, he basically overrode chapter 40a zoning to say that you will put um you will do certain certain things are allowed by right within a, a certain uh perimeter from an mbta stop or station um so you know zoning exists by reason of state law and state law can change Okay, well, more to come on that as it, it rolls Definitely. out. Definitely. Yeah. One thing I didn't see in that article is the is the butternut farm, is that a 40R? Do you know of the Amherst? I do not know. It, it sounded like it was, considering that it, it sounded like it had pretty high density on it. Well, <laughs> Amherst also does friendly 40Bs routinely. So... Um, that might have been that model as well. Uh, I don't, I just don't know. All right. Anything else for, for this evening? I've got nothing. Okay. Well, again, thank you to Justin for all the work on that and uh, more to come. And hopefully we'll see everybody November 6th. Is our next meeting, and it will be at six o'clock, not six thirty. And I'll make sure that um, Crystal's aware of that. And I, I have changed. Uh, I've already changed the uh, the template for the meetings on Zoom. So if you hit the click, it click the link from tonight's agenda. Even though it says six thirty, it will say six. But I'll try to make a point of sending a. Uh, Re making sure Molly gets a revised link that she can send just so it'll look right on paper. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye.